hope you've had an awesome week and I'm excited to explore the book of Leviticus with you. Can you all say Leviticus? It's kind of an odd word, right? But it's an amazing book in the Bible where we learn about God's rules for his people and the rules for sacrifice. Now, I have a confession to make. I am not good at wrapping presents. I don't know about you guys, if you like to wrap presents or if you feel like you are good at giving gifts. But for me, you'd probably find one of my gifts probably in a bag <laughs> and just some used tissue paper. This one even has a hole in it. But I'd probably just stick the present right inside and put some tissue paper in it and give this gift to the person that I love or want to celebrate. Now, if you were giving a gift to the Lord, would you use just any old bag? Would you use holy tissue paper? Not the holy like God. I mean, tissue paper with holes in it. No, if I were giving a gift to God, I think I would maybe get my fanciest wrapping paper. Maybe it would have sparkles, it would shimmer. I would just get the best wrapping paper I could. And I'd even probably get some really special ribbon. Maybe that would have sparkles on it too. But I would want to give the best gift, the most beautifully wrapped gift, if I was giving a gift to God. I wouldn't use just a bag and any old tissue paper, I'd want it to be extra special because God is holy. He is set apart from all else. He is a holy God. And when we present things to him, we want them to be holy also. We want our gifts to be set apart from everybody else's. We want them to be extra special. So I'm excited to dive into our Bible story today in the book of Leviticus to talk to you guys about what offerings and sacrifices look like for God and what God desired from his people. So today, 3D, I want you to give God your offering of worship. I want your worship to be your greatest gift to the Lord today. So it's not a true offering. It's not a true worship without sacrifice. It has to cost us something. So maybe today, if you feel uncomfortable lifting your hands unto the Lord, maybe today is the day that you are brave and you offer your worship as a sacrifice it has to cost us something if the Lord will be pleased with it. So today, 3D, I want you guys to worship the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, and worship the Lord like it's the greatest gift that you can give him today. So everybody on your feet, let's worship the Lord, and I will see you guys after our Bible story today. You are so to anger, rich in love. Done. 
What an awesome job worshiping this morning you guys have done. I'm so proud of you, but more importantly, our good, good Father looks down from heaven upon your worshiping faces and is pleased. So right now, let's encourage ourselves with God's word and speak his word and affirmations over ourselves and our lives. It's our Sword of the Spirit 3D chant time, 3D. So everybody in neon green, I need you to say those words out loud and start after me. Are y'all ready? All right, 3D, who are we? What do we do? Disciple who? Who are you? What are you? Amen. You all are conquerors in Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for us, for all you're doing in and through us. God, you are awesome. All things were created by God, for God, and everything from Him is good. So we are called to go out and to spread the good news gospel message to the ends of the earth. We are called to love others and to share Jesus with them. The Lord loves a cheerful giver, and whether we are giving a tithe, an offering, or giving God our words by telling others about Jesus, His promise says that we will be blessed. Giving a tithe or an offering is a way to not only be obedient to Christ, but to show Him that you trust Him. God's word is true, and it says in Malachi 3, 10 through 11, that we should bring all our tithes into the storehouse, our church, and it promises that the Lord of hosts will open up the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing, we will not have enough room to store it. Now, who wants that kind of blessing? So during this time to focus on missions and our tithes and offering, may we remind ourselves to be on mission for Christ and to always give faithfully to God, who first gave unto us. Here at 3D, we have a heart for missions and we share the gospel message. When Moses was with God on Mount Sinai, God gave him many laws. These laws showed the people what it looks like to live a holy life. God is holy and cannot be around sin, but the Israelites could not keep God's laws perfectly. So God met with Moses in the tabernacle. He gave the people rules about how to live, how to worship God and what to do when they sin. First, God gave rules about offerings. Offerings are gifts people give to God, such as money or jewelry. Sometimes offerings included animals. People could also give grain and bread as offerings. Different types of offerings were needed at different times. When people wanted to praise God, they gave burnt offerings. When they wanted to say they were sorry for sin, they gave a sin offering. God also gave rules about the priests. Priests made the sacrifice that God commanded. The priest took care of the tabernacle and they taught the people God's rules for living holy lives. Aaron and his sons served as the priests. God gave them rules about how to offer sacrifices. God told Moses about a special day that would happen once a year. It was called the Day of Atonement. Atonement means making right what has been wrong. The people needed to atone for their sin to make their relationship with God Right again. On the Day of Atonement, the high priest went into the most holy place, a very special room in the tabernacle, to offer sacrifices for the sins of his family and for all the people. He killed one goat as a sin offering. The high priest laid his hands on a second goat's head to transfer the sins of the people to the goat. This goat was the scapegoat. Then the goat was led away into the wilderness as a picture of the people's sins being removed. God said, on that day, your sin will be paid for. You will be made pure and clean. You will be clean from all of your sins in my sight. God also gave the Israelites rules about how they should live. He said, be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. 
God told the people what it is to be holy. God said, do not tell lies, do not cheat, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Obey my rules. The sacrifices God required of his people were a hint of what God was going to do to forgive sinners. We no longer need to offer sacrifices because we trust in Jesus. Jesus offered himself as the perfect sacrifice that takes away our sin once and for all. Well, the book of Leviticus, it's like God's instruction manual for his people. He instructed his people how to give offerings and how to give offerings that would be pleasing to him. Did you know that there were all kinds of offerings? There were burnt offerings, there were grain offerings, there were even sin offerings and guilt offerings. Back in the day, before Jesus came, the people had to sacrifice offerings to God in place of their sin. It's kind of like when you hurt someone's feelings or you steal something from your friend or your brother and sister. What's the right thing to do? You want to give what you stole back. You want to tell the person that you're sorry. And that's what these people are showing us, that when we sin against God, when we don't love people the way that we should, we need to say we're sorry. We need to offer God our apology as an offering. It's kind of like offering a gift, but a beautifully wrapped, holy gift, and following God's instructions for this kind of offering. So it wouldn't be any normal type of gift, even if it's beautiful. It would be the most spotless, perfect animal that you owned. That's the one that you would sacrifice for the Lord. It would have to be holy, set apart, perfect, the most perfect gift that you could possibly find. That would be what you would offer the Lord as a sacrifice. But guess what? God placed his perfect sacrifice, his perfect offering in place of our sin. Do you know what that gift, that offering is for us? God gave us the most beautiful, perfect gift of his son, Jesus. In John 3, 16, we know that God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God gave us a gift because he loves us so much. He gave us the gift of his perfect, spotless, holy son, Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for our sins so that we could have eternal life. God was showing the people how to prepare their hearts so that they could receive the greatest gift ever given, the greatest offering, the greatest sacrifice ever given. God was preparing his people to teach them how to sacrifice, how perfect, how spotless, their animals had to be in sacrifice and in offering so that they would know the heart of our Father and how much it meant when he gave the most beautiful gift of his son to us. So today, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, his gift of dying on the cross for our sins, follow me in this prayer. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus as the greatest gift of the world, for dying for our sins on the cross so that we may have eternal life in Jesus to be able to live with you in heaven. Today we accept you, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior. We accept the greatest gift, and in return we give you our lives as a sacrifice. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm so proud of you guys. Thanks for joining me today to learn about the book of Leviticus. 
what it meant for God's people to give holy sacrifices to the Lord, but more importantly, to learn about the greatest gift, the greatest sacrifice ever given to us from our Heavenly Father, and that's the love of Jesus. So open your gift. Open the gift of Jesus today and follow him with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, all of your strength. Love the Lord God with all of those things and love one another like yourselves. Love your neighbor as yourself. Did you know your neighbor is anybody that's in close proximity to you? Anybody. It could be somebody five feet away from you or maybe five miles away from you. But we have to love others as God loves us. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and make sure to spread the love of Jesus to all of those around you. I love you 3D and I'll see you soon. Oh,